Surviving the Death Zone. What happens to your body on Mount Everest? The human body is a marvel of adaptability, designed to thrive at sea level with an abundance of oxygen. But what happens when we push it to the limits of survival? Welcome to the death zone of Mount Everest, a region so hostile it seems to wage war on the human body with every breath. Get ready for a chilling exploration of the dangers climbers face at 8,000 meters above sea level. If you're fascinated by the extremes of human endurance, hit that subscribe button and share your thoughts in the comments. What is the death zone above 8,000 meters? Oxygen levels plummet so drastically that the body begins to shut down. Imagine running on a treadmill while breathing through a straw, that's how climbers describe the experience. Even with supplemental oxygen, the air is so thin that every step becomes a monumental effort, a race against time, the body is collapsing and basically dying, says Shauna Burke, who summoned Everest in 2005. In the death zone, brain function deteriorates, lungs struggle, and heart attack risks soar. Spending too much time here can be fatal. In 2019 alone, 11 climbers lost their lives, a grim reminder of the mountain's deadly grip, the science of survival, at sea level, air contains 21% oxygen. But in the death zone, it's just a quarter of that. Blood samples from climbers reveal oxygen levels comparable to terminally ill patients. The heart races to 140 beats per minute, desperately trying to compensate. But this effort can lead to strokes or pulmonary edema, a deadly fluid buildup in the lungs. Symptoms of high-altitude illness include fatigue and a constant feeling of suffocation, persistent coughs that sometimes break ribs, delirium, hallucinations, and impaired judgment, leading to potentially fatal mistakes. The physical toll, weeks of acclimatization are necessary before attempting the summit. Climbers must endure sleepless nights, muscle loss, frostbite, and even gangrene. High-altitude cerebral edema assay, can cause swelling in the brain, leading to confusion, nausea, and hallucinations. Some climbers have been known to talk to imaginary friends or discard life-saving gear in a hypoxic haze. Other dangers include snow blindness from constant exposure to intense glare, vomiting and nausea that weaken the body further, frostbite, where exposed skin freezes in seconds, often resulting in amputations. Why do people keep climbing, despite these terrifying risks? The allure of standing atop the world's highest peak is irresistible to many. Lakpa Sherpa, for instance, has summoned Everest nine times, earning her a place in history as the most accomplished female climber. Advances in technology and equipment have made the journey safer, but the death zone remains a grueling test of physical and mental resilience. Standing on top of the world, conquering Mount Everest is more than just a climb. It's a testament to human determination and the will to overcome nature's harshest challenges. Those who succeed join an elite group who can say, I have faced the death zone and triumphed. What do you think? Would you brave the death zone to summit Mount Everest? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're inspired by tales of human endurance, Subscribe to our channel for more epic adventures.